so many times, you know, people have these perfect pictures of what they've done, and then now it's like the opposite, you know, Pinterest fails or, you know, like, like <laughs> the exact opposite. But I've heard people talk about the pressure they feel about parenting before they're even parents. Like it's gotta be perfect or it's gotta be this or that. And whether it's being nervous about babies or toddlers or being afraid that they're gonna mess up these kids or not wanting to bring them into this messed up and broken world. Um, and I would just say, you know, with us having a couple of teenagers now, some of the most fulfilling conversations I've ever had have been with that age of my own children and other people's children where they're starting to understand how they can actually have an impact right. in the world. And they're starting to, even more so, build upon and own their own relationship of faith. And that is, that's so encouraging for someone who maybe is nervous about this stage. I met an artist and people were asking, you know, how do you create stuff? Like, how does it come? And he said, as an artist, I see the potential in everything. And I took that so many ways because if you don't have children and you're thinking about it, that's an awesome way to think of yourself as an artist. Like you're gonna create something that has so much potential. Mm. It has the potential to do any and everything right down to change the world. I mean, just talking about church, what role have you experienced the church play in your parenting? You know, it's this, this two shores metaphor with this, you know, water in between. So on the shore it's childhood and you're walking with your kids and on the shore it's adulthood, but in between is the turbulent waters of adolescence. <laughs> And you just talk about the boats that kids get in and go across on that and they go through these teenage years. Mm. And he says, as a parent, you're not gonna be in the boat with your kid through those teenage years. They're all, you know, they're separating, they're individualizing all that, but you do have a say in which boats they get in. And some of the top research says that uh, every student needs actually five loving, caring adults, faith-centered in their life. To have that in the church, uh, even if my kids just in kids' ministry now, as at a young age, they're used to that. And then just, I, I'm looking forward to it, like in their teenage years, they're gonna need someone other than their mother and I to go to, because they won't wanna to talk to us about some stuff. I've enjoyed some just taking a step back and getting some perspective and thinking about the last 20 years and seeing now having experienced things that my dad taught me and I was like, roll my eyes at when I was young. <laughs> it's the dadism, but then having really parented in somewhat the same ways and seeing the fruit of that. You know, he modeled generosity. And, and to be able to then parent that way and dad that way and then, and then see my kids be generous. I didn't grow up with a lot of rules in the house. And so Jody and I parented without having a lot of hard and fast rules. And so, so what I learned was that I turned out a lot like my dad. And, and what I also learned is that I was blessed with a really, really good dad. And I'm so much more thankful for him now after having raise my girls than, than I was when I was you know, 22. <laughs> I think becoming a parent, you never really realize how much your parents love you yep. until you become a parent. I mean, that love, it blows your mind. Yeah. And then to think that God loves us even more and loves our kids more, it's earth shaking to me to even wrap, I can't even wrap my mind around that. So to have that relationship with your parents and then to hope, you know have that with your kids, it's just, that's amazing.